Traveling over land in Africa is not only time consuming, but is murder on one's lower back and kidneys. Had we driven from Arethusa to Victoria Falls, the trip would have taken nearly 24 hours. But by plane, it took a mere two hours. The first leg put us on a small seven-seat Cessna caravan for the 30-minute flight from our gravel airstrip to Kruger Airport. We then boarded a real jet for the 100-minute flight to Livingstone Airport in Zambia. Well, we've made it to Livingston, Zambia. What I was not prepared for was Zambia's complete lack of efficiency in clearing immigration. While all four lines were clearly marked, we followed the signs and stood in the line which required us to purchase visas. But after an hour on that stagnant line, we learned it didn't matter what line you stood in, all the lines were selling visas. Needless to say, we jumped into the short line and we cleared immigration in about 15 minutes. Live and learn. Okay, we made it. An hour and 45 minutes through immigration. After about a 10 minute ride from the airport, the Zambezi Sun Resort welcomed us with open arms and a cocktail. Now we're at the Zambezi Sun. This is a resorty place. There's nothing we're going to do as safaris or anything like that. Although Andy's going to have a wild adventure. He's going to do some whitewater rafting. I'm going to do some old lady tour of a village. We're only here two nights and then we're off to another wildlife preserve where we'll be out on safari again. But I am kind of surprised. We first drove up. It is hoity-toity, big hoity-toity. But the room is nothing to look at. I mean, it's nice, but it doesn't live up to what you drive up to. So this is more to kind of relax a little bit, let him have his adrenaline rush for whitewater rafting. I hope he makes it out alive because I don't have life insurance on him. So I really need him around. My Spanish skills are pretty bad. So, and then I'll do an old lady tour, and the next day, We'll just, uh, then we're out of here. I mean, it's gonna be quick, 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 quick. You can't visit Southern Africa without seeing Victoria Falls, one of the original seven natural wonders of the world. Its enormous single sheet of falling water creates clouds of mist that can be seen over a thousand feet into the air and can be seen from 40 to 50 miles away. That's what I knew of Victoria Falls, and that's what I wanted to see. But unfortunately, I forgot about October and the dry season. So instead of seeing mega torrents of water cascading over the edge of the gorge, we saw this. Yeah, it was kind of a disappointment, but we soon got over it. right now at Victoria Falls. I could see how magnificent this place is during rainy season. Unfortunately, we're here when it's very dry right now. So there's only like one little fall coming down, but this place must be, as I said earlier, magnificent during the rainy season when it's just gushing water like Niagara Falls. So let's keep on trekking and see what else we can find. But wait a second. Just as soon as Fran said that it was kind of crappy over here, we turned the corner and there through the big gap is tons and tons of water pouring and cascading over the sides. Having rafted some of the most challenging rivers in the United States, Canada, and Costa Rica, Getting a chance to experience one of the top three rivers in the world was a chance I was not about to pass up. While Fran took off on her old lady tour of a local village, 
my plans were a bit more engaging. Today, I take on the massive torrents of the great Zambezi River. This message goes out to all my buddies in the Band of Rafters. I'm going to tell you this right now. This was the baddest mother I have ever, ever been on. That is a fact, Jack. It makes the, it makes, it makes Class 5 Golly seem like a run. This kicked ass.